Good afternoon, myself Dr. Ruchi Gupta, Associate Professor in IT Department. Uh, today we will discuss another model of uh, software engineering. Already we have discussed uh, SDLC models uh, in detail. SDLC is a software development life cycle. It is a systematic approach for the development of any software. So, there are number of models have been used as per the requirement of the customer or developer. We can use any of the software model. So, uh, in the last lecture, I have discussed about the waterfall model, which is a sequential, linear sequential model for the uh, development of any software. Now, today we will discuss uh, prototype model. So, uh, what is prototype model? Prototype model it begins with the requirement gathering. So, as it is, uh, we can say it is a similar uh, like uh, waterfall model, same as waterfall model, like uh, in the waterfall model, we have just uh, starting in the starting phase, we have to gather the requirement from the customer or other stakeholders and uh, we have to prepare the SRS, then we have to go on to the next phase of SDLC that is a designing phase. So, similarly here we have to start with the requirement gathering. Uh, in this uh, prototype model, uh, developer and customer meet and define the overall objective for the software. They will define all the requirements clearly uh, before the uh, in the very initial phase of SDLC and identify whatever the requirements are known and outline areas where further definition is mandatory. So, after collecting the requirement from the customer, the developer will uh, create a rapid prototype of the uh, software and uh, or we can say the quick designing of the uh, software and uh, the quick designing focus on the representation of the aspect of the software that will be um, visible to the customer means a quick design uh, is to be created by the developer after taking the requirements from the customer and then customer will check these uh, pro this prototype they uh, the customer will verify review and verify that proto prototype and uh, if suppose there is uh, some requirement is missing so again the model again the prototype is to be refined and this process will be iterated again and again until the customer is being satisfied completely and once the customer is satisfied and uh, now there will be no further uh, uh, modification in the requirement then uh, the further steps are followed similar as waterfall model. So, there is only difference between the waterfall model and uh, uh, prototype model is that in the waterfall model the customer uh, uh, once the requirements are freezed, no one can uh, change these requirement. Uh, so, uh, for uh, overcome this problem uh, in this prototype model, the customer will check the requirements on the basis of this prototype model and they have to uh, give uh, some uh, missing requirement or if some requirements are unclear, then they have to uh, uh, refine the requirement as per the customer satisfaction. Now, prototype model, it is based upon the idea of building a prototype before uh, the actual implementation of the system means uh, the major benefit of uh, designing a prototype, prototype is that the customer can easily understand the, what the system will do before its implementation before the development customer can easily understand or analyze on the basis of the requirements. So, it is based on the idea of building a prototype before building the actual system. So, prototype exhibit limited functionality like low reliability and inefficient performance and it is used to show input types, user interaction using some dummy uh, functions. Uh, it used to resolve some technical issues or uh, resulting of some unknown components like new hardware, new software process. Now, uh, 
uh, this prototype model is uh, basically this is uh, it could believe that it is a working system means we can say that it is a uh, it is a working of the it is based upon the cust uh, customer and uh, uh, on the basis of the working system we can easily understood the final system so now developer could take shortcuts and only fill the prototype instead of redesigning the requirement and customer may uh, think that uh, the system is the system is almost done and only fix are needed so uh, on uh, by using this uh, prototype model or by seeing this prototype model the customer can easily understand the final system so this is the overall structure of uh, a prototype model so first of all the feasibility study has been it has been done in the very initial phase uh, in the feasibility study we have to analyze that uh, the software is it is feasible to implement a new software or not after that the requirement gathering then uh, on the basis of collection of the requirement a quick design is to be created and build a prototype of the software then customer will evaluate this prototype and if they have review they will uh, review the requirement they will review this uh, uh, prototype and after that they will uh, define that some require if some requirements are missing then they will give some another requirements and again the developer will refine these requirements again a quick design again a quick design of this uh, prototype has been designed on the basis of new or refined requirement again build a prototype and again the customer will evaluate so this process will be iterated until the customer will satisfied and until the requirements are to be clearly identified so once all the requirements are to be uh, defined or reviewed by the customer then the software is going to the actual implementation phase that is designing then implementation that te then testing and then maintenance so we can say uh, after this requirement analysis phase it becomes a waterfall model so prototype model and th there is a similarity between the prototype model and the pr uh, waterfall model is that uh, once the requirements are clearly identified by the customer by uh, seeing this prototype then after that the whole system it behave like a waterfall model now if any requirement is changed after the design uh, analysis phase now the requirements are totally freezed now there will be no change so this is a basic difference or similarity between the waterfall model and the prototype model so this is a first phase of this uh, prototype model first listen to the customer then build a prototype a quick designing of this uh, pro software uh, on the basis of the requirements then customer will review this designing and again then if there is some requirements are change then again listen to the customer and build a new modified prototype so there are certain advantages and disadvantages of this prototype model so advantage is that it is suitable for the large system for which there is no manual uh, work has been done so generally uh, waterfall model is not suitable for the large system because in the large systems uh, requirements are not to be clearly identified in the very initial phase so that's why in that uh, we have to use a prototype model here so it is suitable for the large system because we have to change the requirement again and again and uh, we and another benefit of this uh, prototyping is that the customer will train accordingly now uh, as i have discussed that user training to use the system means the customer uh, will see the prototype again and again and they can easily analyze the actual working of the software now user service determination 
is also uh, uh, one uh, advantage of this uh, prototype model system training because uh, again and again we have to design a uh, quick modeling so system will also train now ultimately the quality of the software will good because uh, at the very initial phase we have to finalize all the requirement so once we have to finalize the requirement so the system uh, the final system may be an efficient system and uh, the major difference between this uh, waterfall and uh, uh, prototype model is only that requirements are not freeze at the very initially so we can change the requirement we can uh, modify the requirements as per the customer need or expectation now there are some limitations of prototype model also so it is very difficult to find all the requirements of the software initially so because it's a human nature that uh, no one can give the requirement at the very initial phase or it is also uh, very difficult for the uh, real time projects where the requirements are to be changed accordingly so uh, in that case the requirements are not set at the very initial phase so in that case the waterfall model will not work and second it is very difficult to predict that how the system will work after the development so by seeing the prototype med model uh, you never assure that the actual system work accordingly as per the quick uh, designing of the software because the prototype it just a dummy model of the software now we come on the increment process model and iterative enhancement model this is another uh, software development model which we have to used as per the customer requirement or as per the other stakeholder requirements so in the increment process model the whole requirement is divided into the number of builds or we can say the a whole software is divided into the number of modules and we have to deliver the modules by module we have to deliver the software to the customer module by module or by increment delivery so in uh, this uh, increment process model each model or the uh, which have to which we have to say here this is independent unit that passes through the requirements design implementation and testing means uh, we have to once we have to take the requirement from the customer for the one module we have to analyze that module we have to design code and test and after testing we have to deliver it to the customer similarly for in the parallelly we have to take the requirement for the second module again we have to uh, analyze design code and test and it deliver to the uh, customer in the second increment so the increment build model it is a method of software development where the product is to be designed implemented and tested incrementally until the product is to be finished so until all the requirements uh, are to be collected properly we have to develop the software in increment so the major benefit of using this increment process model or iterative model is that because it is uh, it is impossible to give the requirements to give all the requirements for the large project at the very initial phase it is impossible so that uh, we or it is uh, very difficult to give whole requirements of the software at the very initial phase so we have to take in the requirements module by module so it 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 become easy to give the requirements module by module and it is very easy to develop the software by module by module so uh, it is also called iterative enhancement model in this model software is to be broken down into the number of modules which are incrementally develop or deliver so as per the requirement of the customer uh, first of all we have to identify what is the uh, priority wise need of the customer so on the basis of the priority of the customer we have to deliver the module first then second then third 
So first the development team develop the core module of the software or the system and or we can say on the basis of the priority we have to develop the first module then second then third or uh, then uh, go for the last and then it is later defined into the increasing level of capability of adding new functionality in the successive versions and we have to add new functions in the new modules. So, each subsequent coming after sometimes it release of the modules add function to the previous release. So, we have to add some functions or features in the new versions of the software. So, this process will be continue until we have to complete the whole system or we can say the that process is to be iterated until we have to complete the whole software. So, this is a complete uh, uh, incremental process designing uh, process in the first uh, delivery uh, in the first module this is uh, the x axis show the time and the y axis show the uh, number of increments. So, in the first increment in the first increment we have to take the requirement for the first module then we have to analyze design code test that particular module and deliver it to the customer. Similarly, we have take the requirements from another module in the second increment. Then again we have to analyze design code and test in the second delivery we have to deliver this module to the customer. Similarly, in the third increment again we have to take the requirement for the third module analyze design code test and give it to the customer and once the whole modules are to be delivered tested and delivers to the customer then we have to integrate all the modules and finally, we have to deploy the whole software to the customer. So, this is the process of increment process model. Advantage of this model is that the feedback from early increments it improve the later stages. So, uh, if we have to because in this uh, iterative enhancement model we have to take the feedback module by module. So, it is very easy to implement the whole software a complete software with the feedback and second the possibility of change in the requirement is reduced because of the shorter time span because we have a limited time span and uh, if we want to deliver the whole software to the customer. So, it takes too much time. So, uh, before the deployment of the whole software, we have to deliver the module to the customer as his or her priority wise. So, the possibility of change in the requirement is reduced because of the shorter time span between the design of a component and its delivery. Now, the third advantage of this uh, iterative water iterative enhancement model is that user get benefit earlier with the conventional approach. Now, smaller sub projects are very easier to control and manage as I have already discussed that the whole module whole software is to be divided into the number of modules and we have to implement the software in module by module. So, it is very easy to control and manage the module as compared to the whole software or we can say the complexity of the module is less as compared to the complexity of the whole whole software. So, uh, the project can be temporarily abdomen if more urgent one. So, you can also abdomen any module as per the requirement as per the urgent requirement or as per the priority of the customer and finally, the job satisfaction is increased for the developer who see the labor bearing fruit of regular short interval. This is also a very important uh, advantage of this model because job satisfaction is uh, also a very important point about the software development. So, once uh, as 
increment by increment once the uh, uh, software is to be delivered to the customer so it increase the developers uh, satisfaction and they can achieve the milestone of the software this is the disadvantage of this uh, iterative enhancement model because i have already discussed that each and every model has some advantage as well as some disadvantages so uh, the disadvantage is that the programmer may uh, be more productive working on one large system than on a series of smaller ones so uh, as per the developer point of view uh it may be more productive working as we have to work for the large project than it may be a more productive work as compared to the small small modules and some problems are very difficult to divide into the number of modules at the very initial phase it is very difficult to divide the whole functionality of the software into the number of modules at the very initial phase which can be incrementally developed or delivered now software is to be breakage that is later increment may require a modification to earlier increment it is also one of the disadvantage of this uh, model that uh, software uh, decomposition it is very complex task at the very initial phase and um, because at the very initial phase we don't have uh, uh com ha having uh, all the requirements about the software so software breakdown it's a very complex task at the very initial phase and if we have not clearly break down the software then it is very difficult to increment or it is very difficult to deploy the software module by module so these are some uh, disadvantages of uh, the increment process model N uh, now in the next lecture i will discuss about the red model so thank you very much